Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Agile Tester Sample Questions Discussion. Today we are continuing ahead with our chapter 2 sample questions and uh, we do have few questions for you today as well. And the next question what we have for you is question number 17 to continue with our discussion ahead. Well, the question number 17 is which of the following statement about independent testing on Agile project is false? Of course, sometimes they just ask you straightforward questions like true and false. And we have to be just careful with uh, what are they asking at the end of the day that is true or false. And uh, this question is about asking the only option which is not correct about independent testing. So the four options what we have with us is number A, that is option A, there can be a risk of losing test independence for organization introducing Agile. And uh, that's not false. Of course, that's true. Because uh, when, it, you, when you work closely with developers and uh, other stakeholders, sometimes it is very easy and possible enough to, you know, start behaving like them or losing your sense of perception towards an end user perspective so it's very simple and easy that working closely with developers could tend to remove or kind of like you know lose that independent testing perspective altogether talking about option b independent testers will find more defects than developers regardless of test level i think uh, that looks slightly incorrect uh, why with because independent testers can find more defects than developers but this is this is dependent on the level of testing being performed and also the expertise of the independent tester so it's not just like that regardless of the test level say for example unit testing probably you may find less defect but when it comes to integration you may find more defects right in in, in case your developers are not so good at you know, making the product or they're working with more complex and complicated systems, it might be possible that at the unit level or interface level or integration level, you may find more defects than system. So it's not irrespective of the test level. It certainly depends on what type of level being conducted and you can have, you know, similarly proportional level of number of defects being identified. So in that context, yes, it looks partially incorrect, but we can't say upfront because we have to go through the other two options as well. Let's look at the option C. Option C says independent testing can be introduced at the end of the sprint. Uh, not necessarily because, uh, sorry, yeah, not necessarily. It's not, it doesn't have to wait for it. This is true statement. Uh, this is basically uh, an option which preserves a level of independence where there are separate test and development teams and testers are assigned on demand at the end of the sprint. So this helps us to keep us very, very independent. Working within the team probably may help you lose the sense of responsibility of quality or independency. But at the end of the sprint, engaging testers, they will keep them biased against the development. So they will be always independently contributing to it. And this is one thing which is true about independent testing. And uh, D, independent test team can be part of another team. That's also good about independence because as far as they are from development team, they will be more effective and more curious about finding different effects. So yes, this statement also is true. The option is literally satisfying when there are some specialized testers working on non-sprint and long-term activities, they would be more isolated. So I think in that context, we would like to confirm and conclude here by saying that the right answer is B, independent testers will find more defects than developers regardless of level. That is false. Okay, it's, it's not regardless of levels. Levels do contribute to finding more defects. Well, moving on to the next question, question number 18. In an agile project, which of the following would best denote product quality at the end of iteration six of a new system release consisting of eight iterations. So first of all, we have to deep dive and understand the question itself before you even look at the options, always, okay? Have a clear picture of what is being asked to you, which is going to be a very, very good practice to help you succeed. If in case you're not sure about what exactly is being asked, there's no point looking at options because then the options will trouble you, right? So first of all here, there's a release, like end-to-end -end release being discussed about, which consists of eight iterations. And we are talking about at the end of sixth iteration, what defines the product quality, right? 
So now you know what exactly they're looking at. They're asking you the you know, definition of quality at the end of sprint six, which is almost like 75% done. And then another two sprint are remaining. So we just wanna check it out. So answer set on option A says no severity. One or two defects were detected during system testing of iteration six, which allowed the teams to move into iteration seven. So that's a very tricky statement, first of all. Now, when we say, you know, no severity one or two defects were detected is certainly comes as a definition of quality, uh, which is during system testing of iteration six, which allowed the team to move on to the next iteration. But if you pay attention here, this may be an indicator of quality, but it assumes that sufficient testing has been conducted to identify all possible defects. Also, it does not identify if the system is considered to be working software at this point of time, right? See, at the end of the day, the characteristics of the Agile must be met in all constraints. If you say that I do not have anything in particular, uh, which tells me that how exactly it is a satisfactory definition to the quality, right? Just the matrices finding certain set of defects does not help me if the you know, product built is useless to the customer. And in Agile, we say that the primary measure of progress is working software. So this option does not talk anything about the working software. But again, not denying it, but let's cross check with the other three options, which has the best definition to it, right? Because the question says, which of the following would best denote product? So some partially correct, one fully correct. So the next one, what we have here is the result of a customer beta test on the iteration six software release indicate that the system works correctly and that is that it has improved productivity. I think this is bang on title to our question what we have, that is customer is involved here. And moreover, they have done a level of beta testing, which is mainly from the expectations of meeting the desired needs of the end users right no matter like customer is performing their set of people are performing but beta testing is defined that how end users will work on it and what is the feedback so if beta testing is showing that the system works correctly i think this is our final final goal to achieve to define that the product is meeting their expectations so this could be the best best possible trademark to define that it's all up to the mark C, the Agile team has been successfully tracking to estimates with limited variance showing on the burn down charts for all iterations to date. I think this is more from the perspective of scheduling and the effort of the power you have to estimate the work accurately, right? And doesn't basically talk about the quality of the product. You can estimate a work and keep your technical depths away, right? Even if you don't have anything accumulating remaining for you to do, it does not mean that it is the really quality product, right? So in this context, it's, this, is, this is a good indication of team velocity, but does not really provide uh, on the quality of the product, right? So that everyone understands here. Talking about option D, all story cards in the scope for each iteration up to the current iteration have been marked as done, but with some technical depth being inaccurate. So again, this is also a good indication of team velocity, but uh, again, does not give any kind of information on the quality of the product. So in that context, I think we are very, very clear again. And that takes us to the point that the right answer here is B, the result of customer beta test on the iteration six software release indicate that the system works correctly and that it has improved productivity, both. So that's the best definition. Well, moving on to the next one, that is 19. And this question is, which of the following is best again at showing the team's progress against estimates? So estimates the progress according to that. Answer set, we have very straightforward. Option A is burn down charts. Option B is automation logs. C, the agile task board showing user stories and task progress. D is defect tracking tools. So we are talking about showing the team's progress against estimates. Now say for example, you estimated it worked with three days of time. And if I come and consistently track you, right? Uh, I, I have some matrix which tells me that on day one, where are we, day two, where are we, and day three, whether that work is done or not. That would be something which denotes 
that whether the themes is progressing as per the estimates given right so in that case we just need that matrix which helps us to identify that so let me tell you burn down chart is one among them right which helps us to determine the planned progress versus actual progress according to the release dates together with the actual uh, progress of the user stories uh, automation logs um, automation logs basically show how the execution has happened including the result of the execution that is pass or fail and is not basically linked to any form of estimate that's just an execution and that's execution outcome which you see in the automation logs see the agile task board shows showing user story and task progress that's for ongoing monitoring that means uh, this basically task board uh, progress this information is used in the burn on chart later but the task board showing the progress of the user stories and tasks do not have anything to do with the estimates right because this is just a board which shows me that what number of items are in which status and how are we working on that who is working on that what's the priority it's more of life like getting visibility and transferability to what the team is working on but it does not give me any kind of comparison between the estimates and the actual of the work completed with respect to the estimates talking about the defect tracking tools i think <laughs> being a tester you know exactly d is not the right answer right the defect tracking tools basically helps you to manage the defects within the life cycle and at the same time helps you determine the number of defects which are open which needs attention and what not to track the defect but that's not something which talks about the estimates with respect to the ongoing progress so put together i think they're very 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 straightforward the only matrix which we have and the right answer here is a burn down charts are the matrix which helps you measure the planned estimates versus actual completion during an agile project well so that's all again from this particular tutorial team should you have anything else feel free to comment below i'm always there to address your queries and answer them well till then keep learning keep exploring keep understanding the context thanks for watching the video team and happy learning